Are you ready for the ultimate bikepacking weekend adventure? Join us for an unforgettable self-supported bikepacking trip through Southwest Virginia. The Grayson Gravel Pie Bikepacking Adventure travels along the Virginia Creeper Trail, the beautiful gravel roads of Grayson County, Virginia, and the New River Trail. All lodging and camping arrangements are included, along with daily routes and guides riding along with you. This self-supported adventure offers resupply opportunities every 20 miles for your food and water needs. Find out more at GravelTravelDirt.com. You're listening to Mid-Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt. Hi everybody, this is Brian, and this is episode 223 of Mid-Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt. If you're new here, folks, this is the podcast where we talk about gravel bikes, adventure biking, bike packing, bike camping. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about New York gravel or just playing bikes. Now, like I mentioned, we're going to spend some time talking tonight about the inaugural Empire Gravel Ride in New York. It's coming up in just a couple of weeks in, in early July. Before we get to that, I got some great discount codes to share on either the Salt Stick website or the JoJ website. When you reach the checkout, use the discount code Love You Buy. Take twenty percent off all your items over at Cutaway USA. Use the discount code GTD twenty to take twenty percent off your order there. And if you're in the market for a hydration pack, check out Orange Mud. Use the discount code FF two three Rains to take fifteen percent off your order. I'm going to have those discount codes and links in the show notes so you don't have to scribble them down now trying to write in the car don't do that don't do that please let's take a look at strava club our top 100 rider random shout outs jonathan paul from verona pennsylvania with 163.4 david ingram from wilmington north carolina 189 miles flat and harry gardner from vancouver washington way out on the west coast 129.7 to break into the top 100 for the week. You needed 124.8 miles. Our total members in the Strava Club stands at 904 members. So we're starting to move up the ranks. Nice. I like it. Thank you, all our new members. Thank you very much. If you want to dive into the Strava Club, take a look at strava.com forward slash clubs forward slash gravel travel dirt. So. I had a chance um, a couple of days ago to talk with David Swartz of Ready, Set, Go Adventures to discuss the new, this is the very first year, the new Empire Gravel Ride in New York that's happening in July. Now, this event is a part of the Gravel Adventure Series made up of the Jersey Gravel Grinder, the Empire Gravel, Macedonia Gravel, which is in Connecticut, and the Jersey Gravel Grinder Do, which is back in New Jersey. Now, this this ride, and you're gonna you're gonna hear this when I talk to David, is is li- literally no joke, um, and and straight from their website, you have to give in to the dark side to compete or to complete the the mega hundred plus miles. It's a mixed surface riding with ten thousand feet of climbing. Um, there is a slightly shorter adventure, sixty three mile sixty three mile route that has just shy of seven thousand feet of elevation and within the course are nearly nine miles of multi-use trails in the Fon Stock State Park and you're going to hear David talk about um, the fact that these are some new roads and some new routes that were opened up when they worked with the state park. Um, Also note that the Empire Gravel Ride doubles as a fundraiser for Project Echelon whose mission is to help veterans find community and healing through exercise and competition um, the registration fees are very low to cover their permits and their insurance, but they are also doing an additional donation drive through Pledge Reg. You can hear David talk about that. That's specifically for Project Echelon. Uh, joining me now is David Schwartz, who is the event director for the Gravel Adventure Series. Uh, that includes the Jersey Gravel Grinder, Empire Gravel, Gravel which we're going to talk about like 
because that's coming up in just a couple of weeks. And then we've got yep. July 30th, Macedonia gravel, and then the second Jersey gravel grinder, which is in September. Welcome, Dave. It's good to have you back in, with us. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. So where are we where are we talking to you from today, David? You still up at you're in Jersey? Uh, I'm 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 a Jersey boy. Yeah, I'm still North Jersey, and and uh, so much amazing riding, you know, within the vicinity, within a two hour radius, and kind of as we create these events, it's uh, it makes it very accessible. So it's a great location to have some of the, the best riding in the Northeast. So this is the second time you joined us. We talked a couple of years ago about, I guess, was that the original Jersey gravel grinder? Yeah, I think it was either the original, well, it was probably the first or second year at that location. We actually had the first one in 2018. Ah, okay. And um, yeah, and so we've we've learned and had to morph and change and do a lot of different things, and it's continued to grow quite nicely. And okay. obviously grown to the point where we have kind of a, a fully fledged out series kind of coming into shape. So all of these events are under the umbrella of the Gravel Adventure Series, which is a product of Ready, Set, Go Adventures, correct? Correct. And if I remember right, you've got a, a backstory with with triathlons and with, with road racing, with a whole bunch of different aspects of, of bike sport. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I've been racing. This is my 15th year racing, and um, I actually got into it kind of late in life, and maybe that's why I still have so much energy and passion about it. But got into it uh, from being a social mountain biker to being a cross country mountain bike racer to being a cyclocross racer <laughs> who wound up in gravel events on a cross bike and said, "Wait, what?" And <laughs> soon after doing, I think I think by my second gravel event, my road bike is now ever since on the trainer in the house, and it really doesn't leave the house. There's no point. Oh, okay. um, oh wow. Gra- gravel is so much nicer experience so much safer and you know i have a style that i mix in a little bit of mountain bike single track into some of these events and this one certainly has some interesting stuff in in it and uh you know so it suits my style and it's definitely a challenge and uh it's kind of how i like to ride how the crew likes to ride and and uh, the folks that i've connected with so it it makes for a really really great experience out there when you do one of the gravel adventure series rides so it since we got off on bikes let's talk about the bike um what's your bike of choice and that style of riding leaning heavily it sounds like towards maybe some single track and a little bit more hairy adventure what's your tire choice and size so um for it, it's going to vary by the event uh empire gravel because it's definitely got a pretty nice mix and we'll talk about some of the, the highlights um but it's definitely you're going to want something like a 38 to a 40 uh, millimeter tire um I'm, I'm going out and doing the uh the, the shorter length ride the adventure route tomorrow afternoon just to do another preview of it and i'm going to be using uh, uh pateracer gravel king sk's uh 38 millimeter tires um you know so you definitely want something it's definitely not something where you want uh even though it's about 60 40 road the amount you know road to gravel you're going to find that the time you're on gravel is probably more than 50 percent and it's challenging gravel so you definitely are going to want to have um you know just you know good riding ability to soak up some of the gnarly stuff and good traction uh in the spots where you need it okay I know I have always found like I roll, um, 42 pathfinders and mm-hmm. I, I have found that those, those tires, even at that, that width just perform really well with that center file on the road. I, I just, it's a real nice mix. Yeah. So having that little bit of road and it sounds like, it sounds like that would be, uh, an, uh, a good tire for this choice as well. But you know, I, I wouldn't yeah, ever recommend like that'd be great. anybody go below a 38 on, on a true, um, true gravel adventure i think you're you're asking for trouble at that point when you dip it down although yeah, we've all yeah, done it we've all done it we've all done it and and and, and I'll, I'll admit I'm, i've been experimenting on on the jersey routes i've been experimenting with i, I have a newer cross bike and i've been just to give it more riding <laughs> i threw yeah. a pair of 32s on it uh-huh. and i've been doing some of the jersey course with that and and it's definitely not for every rider i'm fine with it because i'm so comfortable in all this terrain would not be using that in Empire Gravel. <laughs> yeah, it does come down to bike handling too. I mean, I I, I think that's uh, a big part of it. Is and yep. also knowing the course. 
I think can also allow you to get away with a little bit more from time to time in that regard. So yeah. M- Empire Gravel is coming up. We just got a couple of weeks to that. It's July sure. 9th. Tell us about Empire Gravel. Where's, where is it and, and what do people need to know? So um, it's uh, Putnam County, New York. Uh, it's starting from the Putnam County Veterans Memorial uh, Park. Um, it's being done in conjunction with Project Echelon, which we'll talk about a bit more and, and some of the originations of this and their connection. But they're a charity that helps support ver- veterans and brings them into the community and helps them heal through exercise and competition. Oh, bravo. So they really kind of, yeah, that's yeah awesome. they really tie into our mission and Eric Hill who runs it, just a great guy. And, um, you know, what we're envisioning, what we want this to become, we'll talk to, and, and you can get a feel of why this has been almost a year of pre-production uh, to get to this point where we're like, okay, how are we having it? Let's go. Um, so, you know, it's definitely been a, a little bit challenging to get everything that we wanted, uh, but the routes are spectacular and it, it, it's definitely, um, it's going to be one of those events where, uh, the, the, you know, our, our typical events, we, we kind of usually have a, uh, a soul ride, which is a shorter kind of beginner friendly route adventure, which is kind of like a medium, you know, maybe someone, uh, either doesn't have the endurance or they're trying to step up from that initial soul ride. And then we have mega, which is for the, just the riders that are out there. It's going to be mm. a tough mother of a course. Um, for this one, there's just mega and adventure. And these are the hardest mega and adventure courses we've ever had in an event. Wow. Period. Wow. They are probably the mega course is about almost 108 miles and close to 11,000 feet of elevation. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the route on um, Ride With GPS right now, and yeah, it, it wiggles and jiggles all over the place, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it, it? It does. It took a lot of creativity to line up um, the route and connecting in all the gravel that we wanted to feature. I, I think the heart of it, and, and one of the genesis, and when I, when I first started doing this and started – um, I mean, the original origin is probably two, three years ago. Um, you know, we had expanded Jersey gravel from uh, one event, which was a, always a spring event in the May. Riders wanted us to do it again, so we did it in the fall. That still wasn't wetting the appetite, so we were looking for another location. Uh, Macedonia and Connecticut won just because it was just quite frankly, easier to put together. And some of the, the, the adventurers were living in that area and we were able to tie in a route and make that happen. And we, that is going to change also. That's coming up right after on July 30th. And then, um, you know, but this has been something near and dear in terms of the proximity uh, that you could get public transportation, get close to the race mm, site cool. and access some incredible riding. But the heart of it, or one of the pieces that fell into place uh, has to be uh, Fonstock Park. So uh, Clarence Fonstock Memorial State Park um, redesigned a large section, about a seven-mile section of multi-use trails. And we were one of the, some of the first crazies jumping on them with the gravel bikes and were blown away. Mm. And uh, they've been very supportive. They're great to work with. Uh, we're also going to be donating to them as well. It's it's something we do to all the parks that we work with and all the communities. Um, and so it's kind of a wild thing that you're, you know, you're going to be going, you know, 20 odd miles in and all of a sudden you've got seven miles, almost eight, actually it's, I guess it's about eight miles of multi use trail that you're riding a gravel bike on. Wow. Um, and they, they flow beautifully. They're not uber technical. There's some rock, of course, but they're not, I wouldn't call them cross country mountain bike trails. They really are well suited to a gravel bike. And, you know, to have that duration of a ride where you can be in the woods riding a gravel bike. And that, that alone is, is worth the price of admission right there. Well, I, um, I see on it, the, on the course that you dip in and out of Fonstock, um, like three yes. times it, it Correct. Is, is, is that, is that new section towards the top, the North, the South, or is it that section over on the Eastern side of the park? 
So that's the northern section. Okay. Uh, it's around mile 22.9 or so. Yep. Yep. Or 22 some. You know, you, you, you dip in and, you know, that's basically going down across and then back up and then popping out. As you said, we do go back into the park on the southern end and then on the eastern end. Eastern end's pretty cool. Um, I envision a future version of it that will probably have some campers in that area because they have a whole large camping site. Mm. We're going to be avoiding the camping site, and there's a section about mile 72 or so where you're going onto a cross-country ski trail. Okay. So it's, like I said, just a really, really great, challenging mix of terrain with a lot of elevation. It's really something that I honestly don't know any other gravel ride that's at that level of distance and elevation in the Northeast. Um, I've been doing a lot of endurance racing in the Midwest uh, over the summers. And, and so that's one of the things that inspired me, you know, uh, rides like Leadville. I did the Breck Epic last year. Um, you know, things that really challenging a rider and, you know, the feeling of how much can I take on? And when you finish a ride like this, um, it's, it's awe inspiring. It really, really is. So it's, but it's, it's definitely for, you know, riders jumping in, they've got to know, they've got to look at the map and know it's going to be a long day in the saddle yeah, and that's going to sure. be a challenge. I'm, I'm looking um, at the ride, the ride profile, the elevation profile. It, it looks yeah. like you got like five or six substantial climbs. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of a, kind of a sawtooth thing going on, which is cool. I mean, you, you know, you got you got to you got to go up to come down. So there mm-hmm. it is. Yeah, the, the the downs are thrilling. I mean, I mean the the one at around mile uh, around mile thirty that downhill. Mm, yep, look at that. I mean, that's just. <laughs> I mean, it's contiguous downhill for two almost two and a half miles. Um, you know, it's it's just got a lot of those sort of things, and then. Of course, you know, we, we, we created the kinder, somewhat gentler adventure route, but it's still 63 miles and, and 6,800 or so feet of climbing. So it's still not light. <laughs> I don't have that route open. Is, is it using some of the same roads and maybe shortcutting some things? or, or what's Yeah, so, so what we did there was we cut off a bit of the uh, first section. The first section only really has a little piece of gravel, but we were trying to get the elevation right and the flow of the route and all those sort of things. Mm-hmm. So it cuts out a section of there, but the heart of the route, that 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 new uh, Fawn Stock Trail system, like I said, that was just built in the last few years, that's all part of it. Great. Um, so it's just, it's really just missing that opener. And then there's um, some really sweet gravel that's kind of um, south of... Uh, the park where it's starting and we're kind of truncating that last section off. It's really pretty. It goes around a bunch of different lakes. Um, but just again, trying to find that balance of, mm-hmm. you know, how you get quality. And then we also took out, um, there's a, uh, a Southern dip uh, after the first big section of the, of the Thonstock park that we also truncated. So basically okay. we just kind of cut in a few areas to, to have a, a loop that still is really effective. Like I said, we're going out and riding it tomorrow to kind of give it a, a final test because we kind of edited looking at it and saying the best pieces. Um, you know, we certainly may tweak it again after riding and saying, well, that might work better. Or this might work better, but I think it's pretty close to a final product. And, um, you know, like I said, it gives kind of the heart of, you know, 70% or so of the really, really good gravel, the route, and so it's a little more accessible. Um, but again, we didn't do a, a sole route. Really, the, the goal of this year was to, to create something, create the challenge, and ride test it. And, and, you know, as much as we've done, get the feedback from riders for what we ultimately want to do with this, which is um, something else. Mm, okay. <laughs> so, um, which I can talk to. So, so when, we, when we started this, um, the, the other... Uh, Gravel Adventure Series events are all uh, gravel fondos, right? So the Grand Fondo format, um, they're basically segment racing where, you know, it's you can chill out, you can stop at an aid station, and then you, then you hammer on, on the segments. Okay. And a lot of it has to be done that, quite frankly, 
um, you know, the areas that we have our events in are great proximity to, you know, the city, uh, both New York City, Philadelphia, et cetera. But being in that proximity, it's also, you, you can't have a contiguous stop to finish um, without significantly raising the cost of admission and closing roads and all that. So, mm. you know, there are open roads. We do, uh, on the other events, we have traffic control and we, and we hire police and all that. Um, this one's meant to be, uh, ultimately, we'd love it to be a point-to-point start-to-finish race. Right. Uh, there's interest from pro teams on the elite field, uh, which Project Echelon has as part of their uh, setup. They have a pro team. Their pros um, mentor veterans as part of what they give back to the community. So it really kind of all ties in. So the goal is to uh, develop this and, and see if we can make that happen at that level where we could still have a full Fondo experience, so to speak, for the, you know, for the, for, you know, a certain level of rider and then also have a true point to point race. Hmm. Um, that's not what we're doing this year. This year it's a charity ride is the structure. Um, it's, it's not the, you know, at the other events we're signing every single turn and we're posting everything. This is going to be minimal signage, and it's going to be a lot more self-sustained. We are going to set up uh, hydration stations, okay. so there'll be key spots where someone can stop and and you know fill up and, and get you know water and, and scratch or Gatorade. I'm not sure which company is selling us product for this one, um, but you know we'll have that. But it's not going to be to the extent of what we do on our fondos, and also um, we've made it really affordable the bulk of it's going to go really just to cover expenses and hopefully a little to give to the charity it's only 69 dollars mm, okay and that's a that's so, a very affordable um entry fee for sure today's market yeah yeah so it's again it's 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 something that we're testing as a way to say okay it's not all the features that we give in a in our fondos so it is important to our adventurers that have done our other events that they understand no it's not going to have those signage where you can just blindly find follow signs mm. and not look at your bike computer or use ride with gps you're going to need to do that you are going to need to utilize yourself i kind of dig that it's back to the i mean it's it's the roots of midwest gravel which is like okay yeah, yeah we're not going out and marking roads they all look the same and you better know your directions <laughs> and which way you're going it's a part of the adventure i appreciate that yeah. and i actually like that yeah and, and and so that's just it it's it's making it very different that it's not going to be look it's not going to be your casual rider jumping into something at this level with that much mileage and elevation right mm, right it's going to be the profile is going to be someone that has some experience riding a decent amount of endurance and you know has has some some thinking of what they've got going in so it's it's that way but we you know the, and and unlike like unbound we actually will have aid stations <laughs> there will be water there will be things but it's it's definitely has a lot of that midwest feel of hey this is the roots of gravel racing or gravel riding um, it is again an open course, which I'm going to stress again and again. People are going to hear it that look, mm -hmm. don't do anything stupid. We don't want people getting injured. We want everyone to have a great time. Um, you know, we're, we're going to use uh, ride with GPS, and we'll set up leaderboards and all that stuff, and we'll set up some Strava segments, and you'll have all those things you can do. But we want people to ride smart, and we know some people are going to ride hard and hammer it and want to test themselves. You know, how fast? Who's going to be the fastest known time in this route? I don't know, you know, we're going to find out. Right. <laughs> but, but, but it's, it's a balance. And, and I caution people like, you know, I'm a hard rider. I've raced for many years. You, you, you got to use your head. There's nothing you're winning in this. Uh, and, and again, that's not the design. The design is more of a structured, challenging ride. And it's kind of proving itself because you know, all the things that we want to line up and all the approvals and all the permits. And, and, you know, I think the biggest thing as, as a, as a race promoter, uh, as head adventure race that goes, I think that I find that racers and riders, unless they get involved with an event, volunteer, really get behind the scenes, they have absolutely no idea. 
Um, I mean, this is literally, I guess, the, the genesis, I'd say it's at least 10 or 11 months of work at this point have gone into this. Mm. So it's, it's countless, countless hours. And, you know, we finally accepted that it wasn't going to be the full race and Fondo sort of experience but we still can deliver something really great. So that's why I was kind of late opening up registration because we were trying to make it happen. And, you know, we had already reserved, we had plenty of parking. Uh, we had already reserved the park uh, for the start of it. We had already worked out with fun stock to have access to their trails. So a lot of the things are lined up. Um, but as with every event, you know, when you're going through multiple towns or in a county and a state and all these approvals, it is a major, major project. And so it's it's something that, you know, I, I find that most riders, once they're educated, they go, oh, I had no idea. I right. thought I'd just show up and and, and this just kind of happened. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and to be know. fair, some rides are like that. Some rides are like and, that. And some are. Some yeah. are like that. But yeah. but it's definitely, you know, and even, even how we curate our courses or even that, you know, and, and, and I drive my, I, um, my route guys insane because we tend to tweak the courses every event. Mm. So, you know, if you go to a Jersey gravel grinder, the spring is different from the fall one, but they're also different from every other one that's preceded it. Right. There's certain elements are going to be the same. Um, and, and so we do the same thing. We create a new route. We kind of tweak it and adjust it and try and put this in and that and, and some of it works great, some of it doesn't, you know, we'll pre-ride it and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's trying to figure out what's that balance. But again, this is meant to be that kind of really challenging ride. And, you know, we're hoping that, you know, we get a good showing and a good feel and good feedback. And then we're able to develop this into something bigger uh, for next year is kind of the goal. So your, your field limit right now I'm noticing is 200 riders. And, yep. and you said that, that you're open registration a little bit late. What's, what's registration looking like right now? It's, it's light. I mean, it's, okay. it literally just opened up, uh, last week. Uh, we didn't do a lot of promotion. It was just kind of word of mouth. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and so that's kind of our next step is really to make people aware that, Hey guys, yes, it really is happening. <laughs> <laughs> and it's July 9th. I, yes, I know a lot of you already signed up for Macedonia on July 30th, but you could do two rides in July. It'd sure. be good for you. Sure. Um, so, but, and, and, you know, and so that's part of it is just, you know, making awareness. And again, you know, it's, it's, um, it's capped only in that we want to have kind of a balance that it's a good experience and, and not overload any of the towns or where have any of those sort of concerns, um, you know, and, and, and sure. kind of get that feedback. And, and I think that's kind of a, a decent number. And again, the goal is not, you know, that this is kind of a break even event at best. Um, it's, it's, it's goal is to put to fruition all that blood and sweat and tears mm. to, you know, all that effort to say, okay, Hey, we realized something it's created, it's live, it's real. And then build on it for next year. Well, I can and, and that, that's, kind of how we're looking at it. I can say looking, looking at the map, I mean, it's, it's very seldom that you can look at a ride with GPS map and you can uh -huh. get a feel that a ride is going to be super interesting. Um, this one really kind of has that feel. I mean, there's, there's so much green meaning state parks and natural areas yep. and there's, and, and this little section of New York, so dotted with all those little pockets of water and those little lakes and you're just weaving in and out of them all around them. I just I get this feel that it's super, super cool route. Yeah, you know, really picturesque, really, even though you're going to be suffering, you're, it's, it's beautiful. It's nice. just really, really pretty terrain. And, you know, and again, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's the, the amount of time on gravel to road is it's going to be pretty even or actually a little more time on gravel than road. The road's going to be almost like recovery <laughs> before you go. And, and it's got some real long stretches of unpaved, uh, you know, trails or roads in it, which is other, another part that, you know, you really like, like, mm. you know, you, you, you know, you, you look at that, that Southern tip there, you know, you, you come through, um, you know, you're about mile 42 
it's got one little you know section of road and you don't get off gravel till mile 56. Yeah, that's a long so stretch. You, it's a long stretch, and that's so you, that little loop at the end, and then you drip way yeah. down. Now, you go through any many little towns. Do you, do you go through yeah. the townships themselves? Um, not so much the heart of it. We, we are on, on, like, the main street in Cold Spring for a little bit on that, on that far west part. Okay. Uh, but most of it's kind of tucked away. You know, it, it, you know obviously – the very nature of the gravel roads are kind of our, on these back roads. And, and obviously we're, we're trying to design routes that minimize uh, riders and cars. Right. Um, you know, you can't eliminate it, but that's again, one of the beauties of gravel is that there's so much less and with so much gravel, the cars aren't going to be going 50 miles an hour sure. and, and, you know, zipping by, they've got to take it easier. They're going to destroy their paint. So, you know, I think that's a beautiful thing about uh, the gravel roads and, and obviously all these sections within the parks are secluded that you're just riding in the park. Nice. Nice. Well, let's talk a little bit about, um, project echelon. Tell me about them. What's going on over there. So, um, so, uh, Eric Hill created, I'm not sure exactly how many years ago this is now, but, um, they, they're kind of a combination of both. Obviously they have a pro racing team and, uh, the charity. And so the charity aspect was, um, you know, to create and support veterans, uh, obviously, you know, and we, we give back if veterans are active military, we give discounts too. we do a lot of things like that in, in our events. And it's really, you know, I think the way you look at it is that a lot of those folks that have, that are veterans that have been in various wars, you know, they're dealing with a whole range of challenges, right? They're, they're, they're disconnected from the community. Um, you know, they have, they have, various disorders from, from, you know, some of the action they've seen. And, you know, really it's, it's one of the things that, um, you know, I look at, you know, my own trajectory in in racing and riding and all that. And, and that sense of community and empowerment of what these sort of events bring and that sheer, I mean, I, I joke sometimes we're, we're paid in, in sheer joy and smiles, nice. right? That that's, that's my bank account. Right. And so the charity is very much aligned with that in the same way in that it's, it's working to bring veterans into the community to help them heal, to challenge them with events like this and to mentor and tutor them and help develop them to make them ready and support them to do these sort of things. And, and it, it definitely is a way that, you know, it's, it's, it's not very often you're going to find an unhappy gravel rider, mm. <laughs> you know, mm. right uh, the, it, 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 right? it, it's, it's kind of a way of life where, you know, you, you, you're amongst this just amazing, beautiful terrain and reminded of, of, yeah, there's a lot that's really, really freaking great. And I want to see more. Mm. And then you meet a whole, you know, tribe of, of fellow riders that are in that same mindset and just, just that experience. And then, you know, yeah, that's, there's that competitive edge and pushing each other to get better and all that stuff, you know, as a, as an athlete. But I think that's the core. I think that that's the thing that comes out of it. And that's like I said, we, we, we found we were very, very aligned with their mission what they're trying to achieve. And, um, you know, it, you know, I look at it this way or one of the comments I came across was, you know, they're dealing with challenges every day. You can take one day and give yourself a huge challenge mm-hmm. yeah. and, and see, and, and push through it. Right. Um, you know, I, we've had riders do their first century gravel rides with us, you know, and, and some of our events and, and, you know, some of them were not the first people finishing. They're some of the last finishers, but the sheer joy of what they accomplished in like putting themselves out there and make it happen. Right. It's huge. So it's huge. It's, sure. huge. it's yeah. huge. It's and, huge. And, 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 you know, my, my own experiences have been that way. And, and I think that's it. I think that's where, you know, the, the lifeblood of the company and how we keep going and how we keep developing things is that is, you know, we're still active racers <laughs> and we're still getting that vibe and that joy and that feeling and, and, you know, each time we do the significant, you know, endurance event, we're like, oh, wow, this is still really cool. Okay, let's keep going. Um, but it, 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 you know, keeps us going on to spread that feel and that word and that joy and, and, uh, and, and you know, make the world a better place 
through, through the bike and, and these sort of experiences. So we're, we're super excited and, and love to see where it's kind of organically grown, right? We, we start off with one gravel event and it's the riders saying, could you do more? <laughs> Cause yeah. this is really fun and, yeah. and great. And, 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 you know, and then, you know, with anything as it morphs and develops, you know, this one was like, okay, we've got three great gravel fondos. They're super awesome. They have segment racing. They're fun. They have pancakes at the first stop and, and maple syrup and, you know, just a lot of really, really cool things that we throw into those. This is the, the challenger. This is meant to be, you know, you, you're, you're coming to the Northeast. This is going to be the ride to, to, to push through and, and, and try and finish and, and make happen. And, you know, there's some bailout points here and there, but most of it you got to do. You know, there, there's not a lot of outs. Looking at the route, it does look like there's some places where, you know, you could pinch some pieces off if you really needed oh, to. Oh, a- absolutely. But, but you got to be careful. You're, if you're, Sometimes yes. that could get you in trouble, <laughs> too. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But, then, yeah, there's definitely some bailout spots, and we'll let people know that. Say, hey, if you're you're on the mega and, you know, you, you hit about mile 75 and you're cooked and you're bonking, well, you, you, you can cut out quite a bit and come back to, to base and be like, okay, <laughs> come back next year stronger right yeah. and, and that's okay yeah, that's right? right um but but that's you know that, and that's the, the design and then again while we created the, the shorter route which is still no pushover um you know doing 63 miles of over six thousand feet of elevation is is a good solid day ride so um you know we're sure even those riders at that level are going to find a real good challenge and yeah. be really happy they took it on uh any event sponsors you want to give some shout outs to you know what? Um, there's not necessarily one specific one for this event. Um, Goo's been with us for six years now. Um, and, uh, you know, they're always helping us. You know, they, they discount very heavily their gels and chews and stroop waffles and stuff like that. So they, they've been a real, real good partner. Uh, we've worked with Scratch here and there a little bit. Um, so, you know, it's just a, a matter of, uh, you know, what lands here. And, and I think that we're just going to kind of pulling some things and make it happen for this one. Well, I would also be remiss as we get near the end of our conversation. If I didn't give you major shout out for the logo, um, it, folks, if you haven't seen the empire gravel ride logo, I'm not going to say what it is. Go look at it. It's super, super cool. Like just legit on point. Well done. Well done on that. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know what? It, it's uh, the naming was a process as with all these are and trying to find the right way to give it its feel. And, uh, yeah, pe- people are going to have to give into the dark side to, <laughs> to pull this one out. We'll, we'll give it away. It's, it's a super Darth Vader with the, with the fighters behind him and the skyline and the empire. And it's, it's done in black and white. I'm so that's done by, by design. I'm sure yeah. that's just, it's ridiculously on point. That's going to make a, a fantastic, a uh, group of swag giveaway that I think people will yep. c- clamor for. Um, so, so kudos on that. Well, well done. Bravo. I'm not sure whose brainchild that was, but uh, give them an extra Stroop waffle. Uh, there, there you go. Stroop, Stroop to the group. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, David, thank you so much. Um, oh, wait, before we, before we get away, how can people find out um, about it? Let's get some URLs. I'll obviously put them in the show notes, but sure. let's, get, let's put them out here too. Yeah, so so all of our gravel events are up on the Race Echo Adventure page. The quickest shortcut is probably going to jerseygravelgrinder.com. That's kind of become our de facto gravel page. Okay. Um, the uh, registration's up on Bike Reg, bikereg.com slash empire. We'll get you right to the empire page. And then, you know, if you want to link to the other registration uh, for the races from Macedonia or Jersey Gravel Do. Those you'll find at the bottom of the page on that registration page or from the website. Awesome. I will make sure to put links in the show notes so that we can get yep. folks directly over there. Um, and and this looks like a cool one, folks. If if you're not already signed up for some event and July events early, that's sort of like the wind down. So um, you know, looking at that window of time, if you if you're in the Northeast and you've got nothing going on, this looks like one you might want to check out. I I. I think yep. it's pretty on point. And then, like you said, you got Macedonia, which is just over in Connecticut, um, yep. just a couple weeks later. So, and, and correct. We didn't, we didn't touch too much on that. We will, we'll, we'll circle back on that. Um, yep. but, but super cool series. And then, and then again, Jersey gravel grinder do the second one is September 24th 
and that's right down correct Bedminster, New Jersey. So yep. check out all of that and stuff. And what, yep. And one last piece, I'd be remiss uh, if you could also put on a uh, project echelon yes. dot org. Yes. Um, when you're registering, we're asking, we're also using pledge reg and we're asking people to please give and donate to project echelon when they register. So they'll have to be prompted for it. There's no set amount. There's no, you must, but, that's really kind of the goal is we're trying to help them raise awareness of what they're doing and uh, help them raise funds to support their mission. You got it. I'm going to add that link direct. So there you go, folks, check that out, check all of it out. And uh, thank you once again, David, for, for joining us again. And, uh, and don't be Pleasure. a stranger, come back anytime and uh, let's talk gravel bikes. Thanks everybody for listening to this episode of mid Atlantic gravel, travel and dirt. If you enjoyed the podcast, Maybe run over to the website at graveltraveldirt.com, grab some stickers. Um, they're back in stock. I've got one order that's pending that I, I had to wait for some more stickers to come in. Um, and I'm going to send a double pack of love stickers out on, on that order. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and t-shirts as well. Uh, the website, like I mentioned, graveltraveldirt.com. Instagram is at midatlanticgtd. Thanks for riding along, everybody. Until next time, do good. Be nice. Go slow. Respect others. Love you, bye.